All right, so this coming Wednesday, it's going to be a very, very big two nights, actually, because Wednesday is the beginning of the Great American Bash and Fighter Fest, follows up the following Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, both shows have five announced matches. The following week, at this point, NXT has one, and AEW has six. So they have fully built up both of their shows. NXT is, I'm sure, going to use uh, night one to build up night two, but... Night one for NXT. Here are the five matches, and you can talk about them. Io Shirai, Sasha Banks, Dakota. So this is this is this is non-title, and um, I mean the match. The match should be really, really good, and I think the match will do well. One, you know, one of the things. So, so I guess that NXT is going to do limited commercial interruptions, which is um, the one thing is is with both of these shows is that when they go to commercial. There's a large audience, like it's a real big audience, switches to the other to the other side. So limited commercials is is, is um, now that could be like you know sometimes they've done limited commercials early, but then do tons of commercials late. So it sort of it balances out. But if it's just limited commercials throughout the show, um, that's that's a big advantage. Dakota Kai, Mia Yim, Candice LeRae, and Tegan Fatal Four Way for the number one contendership. Yeah, it's an elimination match. So, um, yeah, the winner, I guess, goes with goes with Io Shirai. And um, I don't know if that'll be next week, uh, but I would think I think there's a good chance it would be, yeah. Roderick Strong, Dexter Loomis in a strap match. Yeah, that feud sucks. <laughs> I don't know how, you know, <laughs> that feud sucks. Rhea Ripley versus Aaliyah and Robert Stone in a handicap match. If Rhea Ripley loses, she must join the Robert Stone brand. Mm. Do you think they're going to do that one? God, I hope not. I don't think so either, but um, they could. I mean, it would it would make for an interesting... It would make for a storyline. I mean, it would pay something off because they've just, like, humiliated Robert Stone at every turn. Dude, to go from being the NXT Women's Champion all spring to losing it at Mania, never getting revenge on Charlotte, and then being put in a comedy group, I mean, no. Please. Yeah. I'm basically yeah. begging at this point. Yeah. But I mean this I, I just don't understand what the whole deal is with Robert Stone other than it just it just feels like I don't well, I guess that they just, you know, think he's a guy that they can uh humiliate all the time and it'll be okay. And we got Oni Lorkin versus Timothy Thatcher. That that actually should be really good. Uh just it's a unique matchup and um yeah, Oni Lorcan's always a good opponent for almost anyone, but that's a good style of opponent. It's a good person for um, Thatcher to work with as well because Thatcher's tough because um, you know certain you know his style only works with certain type of people, and Oni Lorcan is is one of those people. So the AEW show far more star power, three title matches. We got Kenny Omega, Adam Page versus Best Friends for the AEW World Tag Team Titles. So the one thing about this is is um, I mean, the match will be really good, but the one thing is, is I'm not sure about if anyone's going to take the best friends seriously as a tag team championship challenger. Um, I mean, work-wise, I know it'll be really good. Uh, so, and it, that's... A, now, last week they were pushing that as the main event, and I watched some stuff today that led me to believe maybe they're going to go with Joey, Cody and uh, Jake Hager as the main event. I don't know. Well, Cody and Jake Hager is for the TNT title. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Yep. It's it's a match. Um, should be, you know, I mean, it's, it's I guess the big onus is on Jake Hager. Cody's had a lot of good matches lately. Um, Hager, you know, was in the match with Moxley, but that was a tough one. I think it went too long, and... Um, you know, it was empty building, so it was it was a tough match. So this is his chance to atone for that match, even though most people, even though I mean, I think that it was a good effort and everything like that. But um, you know, this is it. It you know, this this is a chance to uh, have a more dynamic match. I guess I don't know. I mean, the the Moxley match was really good, but I don't think it came off so good on television. I think also because. It came after, you know, it was, there have been so many matches of that type, and I think that it came at the wrong time, you know, just like the Ciampa and Gargano match. 
you know, once they had that you know, the Boneyard match and the Edge and the uh, Edge and Orton match that was too long as well, it was kind of like I think that people didn't really want long matches that week. Got a cover sheet up, Penelope Ford for the women's title. Well, that's a big one for both of them. I mean, especially for Penelope Ford. She's never had a singles match at this level. And um, we'll see how she does. Uh, she did pretty well in the tag matches. Uh, I mean, um, the brawl was good. Uh, see how how the rate, you know, all these. The ratings are going to be really interesting. This is going to be very interesting ratings um, between uh, just every everything about it. Um, you know, I mean, everybody would have comfortably said that AEW would, would do real well this week. But NXT is real, you know. AEW had such a bad week last week in the ratings, and um, so it feels like that they it's possible they've lost momentum, or it could have just be a one week fluke. I don't know, um, but the ratings. I do think that there, there's going to be a lot more interest in the ratings this week than there's been in in months. We got the Jurassic Express versus MJF and Wardlow. Well, the match will be great, and uh, yeah. Wardlow's Wardlow looks has, has looked really good, and um, MJF, of course, uh, future superstar, and Jungle Boy's future superstar, and uh, Luchasaurus. This match, I, I will say, like this match will probably be heard a lot now that I think about it by not having a crowd because Luchasaurus is one of those guys. I think Luchasaurus has been hurt a lot by no crowd. Um, a lot of guys have been, but he's he's him more than most because he had so much crowd appeal going for him, and and without it. You know, it's it's uh, it just makes a big difference for him. And finally, Private Party versus Santana and Ortiz. Yeah, they had one match on TV that was, um, I mean, it was all right, but it wasn't great. Um, you know, Private Party's got all those cool moves. It's just a question of putting the whole thing together. And, uh, you know, see how it goes. I mean, it should be. They started out together, but then again, you know, the Hopefully it's better than the last one. I mean, not that the last one was bad, but um, I, I remember the last one was the tribute match, and um, it was it it just just uh, private party still looked kind of green in the match. So for week two, the only thing that NXT has announced at this point: Adam Cole, Keith Lee, winner take all, NXT title and North American title. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, we'll get to that. I'm sure they'll be building that up too. And, of course, for AEW, it's Moxley versus Brian Cage for the AEW title, which I presume has got to be the main event on that show. Yeah, 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 yeah. That Jericho. Is, that would, that would be the main event, and then Jericho and Orange, and then the um, eight-man tag. Jericho, Orange, would, which, Cassidy, Lance Archer, Joey Janela, Nyla Rose facing somebody. Cole Cabana and Dark Order versus SoCal and Censored, and then, yes, the eight-man tag, which actually may headline the way they've done things before. The FTR, eight tag, the eight, eight man tag is going to be tremendous. It's FTR and the Young Bucks versus Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Brothers. Yeah, that's going to be. That should just be really good. So there you go. That's the uh, lineup for this coming Wednesday night, and be very interesting to see what the ratings are after. As noted, yeah, it's going to be past Wednesday. It's going to it's going to be interesting. I mean, really, weeks. honestly, the AW card is far stronger, but. The limited commercial breaks, whatever that means, and we don't know what that means. It means something. It, 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 I mean, it, it means it, something, it, but I mean, like it it it, hel- it, it could helps. be a first half hour with no commercials. They've done that before, and then and then you know at the end of the show, there's commercial, 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 which would help AEW there as the show goes on. Or they may have just made a deal to have limited commercials, but I don't know if I'm USA Network and and you're having a two night Great American Bash. I mean. I really going to agree no commercials on this show or very limited commercials. I feel like they're going to have to get well, the it's, it's, the actual number of commercials at some point during the show. Not necessarily. You know, I mean Yeah, not necessarily. The um then also on Raw they they really pushed it hard, much harder than the usual week too. So there's definitely a, a lot of awareness and and AEW's pushed the state hard too. So they both pushed hard. I mean, in theory, it should be the most viewers of the year combined. In theory, but and and you, you know, you know, you never know how the news will break, um, and uh, but we'll see. 
we'll see what happens. I mean, it's, um, there's, you know, there's the two different things. I mean, the thing with the, the AEW is that, um, I mean, the NXT show last week is that, I mean, the number, the final number looked good, but it was so heavily skewed to those over 50. I mean, the 18 to 49 was only 0 0.20, which is not particularly good now for NXT, for AEW. The numbers were just, there's, the, this was just like a fall off the cliff bad. Um, there's no other way to look at it. I mean, it's, it's only a one week, so you don't, you know, I don't, I don't believe in overreacting to one week because so many times we've seen like one really bad week and the next week goes back to normal. It's just a, an aberration or whatever but i mean the ratings pattern everything about the show was the the lowest rated show in history the main event segment was the lowest rated segment in history the 18 to 49 was the lowest rated 18 to 49 in history i mean it was just and the, the pattern i mean the thing is it opened it opened with the, the luchasaurus and wardlow opening match did quite well for an opening match especially considering what the lead-in did it um you know, it went from um, what was it, three hundred and a little over three hundred thousand to like seven hundred fifty thousand. I mean, that's great. But from there, it was just from there. Every you know, almost every segment except for the um, uh, the one where FTR and Daniels and Kazarian, and then they had the brawl after with the Young Bucks and Butcher and Blade, which you know it gained, and it wasn't even a big gain, but it gained. But almost every other segment lost. It was just like a steady loss, and then the final segment. I mean, those numbers were just, they're mind-boggling. And it was Jericho and Orange Cassidy uh, in the final segment, too. I mean, now a lot of it, you know, if you look at it again, it, it really was, a lot of it was that uh, Adam Cole, and, and I mean, not Adam Cole, but Keith Lee and um, Gargano and Finn Balor match. That was a big one, and, and that's the match that people wanted to see on Wednesday. And that cause, because the, the big, there was a real big turnaround um, in the second hour, and especially in the last half hour. That was where you really saw the the gap just really widen, and even NXT actually win in eighteen to forty nine. So, so that's like the key to everything was the fact that people were into that match. But we'll see what that means because you know that show AEW didn't have a lot of its biggest stars wrestling, and and this week they've got a lot more star power by far in in the ring, and AEW is pretty much does draw based off of. Um, you know the matches and the, and the wrestling uh wwe draws more on uh skits and and non-wrestling it seems like so um so we'll see what happens